in his blood he therefore had an enormous amount of information inherited, so to speak, genetically from his forebears. And the family motto was, have faith in the silent forest. He, as a young man, spent most of his time in the forest, and there he was able to perceive phenomena, energetic phenomena in nature, in untouched virgin forest which gave him so many insights into the way nature functioned and particularly with regard to water. He says that he used to sit beside a flowing stream and was never bored for a minute. He used to allow a part of his consciousness to flow away with the water and when it was returned to him finally the water psyche revealed many secrets to him. So, in a sense, he was able to send his consciousness to those places the eyes couldn't see. And in returning with information, it confirmed or further developed the theories that he had on water. Throughout his whole life, he was an unconventional person in terms of contemporary physics or science and he had a long and running battle with scientists, often acrimonious, because those things that he said were the realities were usually in stark conflict with accepted theory at the time. And fundamentally this revolves around water and the way water should be viewed and what is important for water to maintain its inner health and vitality. And what is water? Well, water, in Victor Schauberger's view, is a living substance. And whether it has life or death depends on the way it's been treated, what it's handled, how it's forced to flow or how it flows, under what conditions it flows. And all these things Victor Schauberger perceived in his long sojourn in the forest in Austria when he was a young forester and he had access to phenomena, energetic phenomena, which nobody else had. And indeed, in, in 1930, he wrote a book called Our Senseless Soil, which laid out clearly for everyone to see all the environmental catastrophes that would happen and which would be inevitable if humanity did not change the way it has dealt with water, treated water, and the forests as well, because the forest and water are so closely interconnected. You remove the forest, you remove the water at the same time. You destroy the forest, you destroy the water, because instead of flowing in coolness under the shade of trees, which is the way nature ordains for water to flow, it flows out in the sunlight and loses its energy. One of the great elements, the factors in water, which Victor was able to put his finger on, was that of temperature. When we are healthy, we say we haven't got a temperature. And water hasn't got a temperature when its temperature is four degrees Celsius. At this temperature, water is at its most dense, it has its highest energy content. It has its greatest life-giving potential at that temperature. And when the temperature increases above 4 degrees or below 4 degrees, then water gets less dense. And this anomaly point of water, and it's anomalous because all other liquids become consistently denser with cooling, water is the only liquid which stops getting denser at 4 degrees and starts getting less dense below that. Oxygen is always present at all processes of growth and decay. And in water, which sphere it is active in, depends on the water temperature. The critical temperature phase between one and the other is, according to Victor Schauberger, about 9 degrees centigrade. Victor saw a completely different view of phenomena. The water as a living substance, but the water itself was a transformer and receiver and emitter. It transformed the energies of the cosmos and the energies of the Earth. 
And in this area, we also have to differentiate between the forces from the cosmos, which Victor viewed as being male, and the forces of the Earth, which were female. And water was what he called the first substance, the first born. And it was born through the interaction of the elements of the Earth and the cosmos, and more particularly, the sun. And it was the sun's fertilizing influence on water through oxygen, which, in Victor's view, was a lower form of solar radiation, which created the marvel that is water, or made out of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom in that combination. So, coming back to this operation of oxygen in water and how it functions in water, it is the inseminator in both cases of growth and decay. But when it's in a beneficial mode, then it is at a temperature below 9 degrees, the carbon substances or the carbons of the earth which Victor grouped all together as under the name mother substances. These were every element except for oxygen and hydrogen. Hydrogen was the carrier substance, oxygen was male and fertilizing and all the other substances were female. And if you think of the word material itself, it has its origins in the Latin word mater, which means mother. And so perhaps if we think of it in this way, then you get an idea of what mother substances mean. And when oxygen is bound or is fertilized under cool conditions, then the female part of the interaction surrounds the oxygen, which is passive. And then the energies are transferred in such a way, or transformed in such a way, as to provide creative, growing, beneficial things. And this is the interaction of oxygen and the mother substances below 9 degrees. Once the temperature goes above 9 degrees, then the oxygen becomes aggressive and it binds the mother substances. That it, it surrounds the mother substances who then become passive. And in that situation, parasitic and bacterial life forms evolve. When we approach a new way of designing or a new way of looking at moving water, for instance, and then we have to design a process which allows water to change and to transform and to move and to be itself, fundamentally to be itself. In the reticulation of water for drinking purposes, it's important to generate this longitudinal vortex. While the central flow is a simple spiral, the external peripheral flows is a double spiral movement, a rotation about the central spiral, which acts in a way like ball bearings and uh, facilitates the faster flow of the central core water. This double spiral movement is inaugurated by the emplacement of guide vanes which deflect the water from an otherwise straight path into a spiral path. And these, in Victor Schauberger's concept, would be silver-plated copper placed in a wooden pipe at certain intervals to create or provoke or promote this centripetal spiral flow. This spiral movement is the rejuvenating movement which endows water with fresh energy and also um, because of the movement and because of the way the oxygen is separated from the core water initially and diverted to the outside certain bacteria, and pathogenic bacteria, anaerobic bacteria are exposed to excess oxygen and die off and in the process uh, the longer the movement down such a pipe the purer and the more bacteria-free the water becomes. Water has certain patterns of motion. It has certain energies. And these energies are derived from its motion. And unless it is able to move in the way that generates its energies, then it becomes a sluggish and slack. It's very important for water to be able to generate a longitudinal vortex 